Welcome to our soil testing video series jointly presented by the Geotechnical Division of the HKIE and the Geotechnical Engineering Office of the CEDD. The production of this series is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors. In this episode, we're going to explore the methods for determination of the moisture content and the particle density of a soil. Moisture content, also known as water content, indicates the amount of water in a soil. It is defined as the ratio of the mass of water to mass of soil grains, hence a dimensionless unit. If you remember, in the phase diagram for a soil, we have three material phases. Air within the pores, water, and solid soil grains. Air is assumed to be weightless. Therefore, the mass of air equals to zero. In the laboratory moisture content test, the soil is dried using an oven, such as a conventional oven with a convectional heat transfer mechanism. The mass of water is determined by finding the difference between the mass of the wet soil and the mass of the oven dried soil. The mass of soil grains is simply the mass of the oven dried soil. The nature of water in a soil, especially in a clay soil, is not straightforward. There could be up to five different types of water surrounding a soil particle. Adsorbed water. This cannot be removed by oven drying even at 105 degrees Celsius. Hygroscopic water. This can be removed by oven drying but not air drying. Capillary water due to surface tension. This can be removed by air drying. Pore water. This can be removed by drainage with the water moving through the voids between the soil grains. Water of hydration. This is the water chemically bonded to the soil grains, which does not form part of the water that governs the engineering behavior of the soil. In Geospec 3, there are three test methods related to moisture content determination. The definitive methods use an oven temperature of 45 degrees Celsius and 105 degrees Celsius. Most of the saprolytic residual and colluvial soils in Hong Kong contain varying amounts of water of hydration. Hence, the use of 45 degrees Celsius should be considered. However, the test would take a longer time than 105 degrees Celsius. In case of doubt, the presence of water of hydration in the soil can be confirmed by a test known as the comparative test. In this test, the soil is first dried at 45 degrees Celsius and then dried again at 105 degrees Celsius. Then we compare the oven dried mass obtained. If a significant difference in the dry mass is found, all moisture content tests for this soil should be carried out at 45 degrees Celsius. If the difference is insignificant, the designer may choose to use the 105 degrees Celsius for a faster test. Before we move on, let's talk about how we can make sure that a soil has been dried completely in oven drying. Based on Geospec 3, successive weightings of the cool specimen are done at 4 hour intervals, shown here as MD1 and MD2. If the difference between these two successive weightings does not exceed 0.1% of the original mass of the wet specimen MS, then the soil is accepted as dried. In Geospec 3, a soil is classified as either fine-grained, medium-grained, or coarse-grained. You should refer to Geospec 3 for the definitions. For each type of soil, a minimum mass of wet soil is required for the laboratory moisture content test. The amount of soil to be used depends on the soil classification. This is to ensure accurate determination of the moisture content. You should refer to Table 2.1 and the relevant clause in Geospec 3 for details. Let's now talk about the application of the moisture content test. Moisture content test is not commonly carried out as a standalone test. The moisture content is required in calculating values of different soil parameters such as liquid limit, plastic limit, liquidity index, and void ratio. It is also used in many other tests, such as proctor compaction test, sand replacement test, triaxial test, shear box test, and the odometer test. For fully saturated soils, moisture content is directly proportional to void ratio. 
It is also common practice to plot undrained shear strength against moisture content for cohesive soils. Let's now move on to another soil test, which is the determination of particle density or specific gravity of a soil. Particle density is the average density of the soil grains in a soil. Its value depends on the density of the soil minerals present. Particle density is mathematically defined as the ratio of the mass of soil grains to the volume of soil grains, with a unit of megagram per cubic meter or gram per cubic centimeter. Specific gravity of the soil grains is the ratio of the particle density to the density of water and is dimensionless. Although the particle density of many common rocks lies between 2.2 to 3.3 megagrams per cubic meter, the average particle density of most soils differs little, typically lying between 2.6 and 2.8 megagrams per cubic meter. In Geospec 3, an average value of 2.65 megagram per cubic meter is recommended to be used if there is no laboratory test result. There are two definitive test methods specified in Geospec 3. They are the gas jar method and the small pycnometer method. The gas jar method is suitable for coarse grained soils, while the small pycnometer method is suitable for soils containing particles finer than 2 mm, which are sand or finer material. If the soil contains coarse particles, the large particles may be ground down to sizes suitable for testing. In the gas jar method, two specimens obtained from passing dried soil samples through a riffle box are used to determine two particle density values. The minimum soil masses recommended for the test for different soil classes are shown here. The test procedures will now be outlined. First, we weigh a clean, dry, empty glass jar and the glass plate shown here as M1. The soil specimen obtained from riffling is then poured into the gas jar. Then we weigh the gas jar, glass plate and dry soil, shown here as M2. Fill the gas jar with dry soil halfway with the aired water and place a stopper at the end to prevent loss of soil in water suspension during stirring or shaking. Shake the jar in an end-over-end -end mechanical shaker for at least 30 minutes. Top of the water in the gas jar to 1 liter. Weigh the gas jar with soil water suspension and the glass plate shown here as M3. Make sure the gas jar is clean when you are recording the weight. Empty the gas jar of its contents. Clean and fill it with 1 liter of de aired water. Weigh the gas jar with de aired water and the glass plate shown here as M4. Repeat these steps for the second specimen. Knowing the weights M1 to M4, the particle density can be obtained using the equation shown here. If the difference in the test results from the two specimens is less than or equal to 0.03 megagram per cubic meter, the average is taken to be the particle density of the soil. Otherwise, the test should be repeated. Let's move on to the small pycnometer method. In preparation, two soil specimens are obtained using a riffling box, each having a weight between 5 grams and 10 grams. The test procedures will now be outlined. First, weigh the clean, dry, empty pycnometer and stopper shown here as M1. Pour the dry soil specimen into the pycnometer and weigh the pycnometer with stopper and the dry soil shown here as M2. Pour some de-aired water into the pycnometer with dry soil. The setup is then placed in a vacuum desiccator to remove the air from the soil. Top up the water in the pycnometer to the brim and insert the stopper. Weigh the pycnometer with stopper and the soil water suspension shown here as M3. Empty the pycnometer of its contents. Clean and fill it with de-aired water. Weigh the pycnometer with stopper and the de-aired water shown here as M4. Repeat these steps for the second specimen. Knowing the weights M1 to M4, the particle density can be obtained using the equation shown here. As in the gas jar method, if the difference in the test results from the two specimens is less than or equal to 0.03 megagram per cubic meter, the average is taken to be the particle density of the soil. Otherwise, repeat the test. Now, how can we use the particle density or specific gravity value of a soil? 
a few simple applications will be outlined here. First, the void ratio of a soil can be easily calculated from the particle density by using this equation 1. Equation 2 connects the specific gravity with moisture content, void ratio and degree of saturation. For fully saturated soils, moisture content is directly proportional to void ratio. Bulk density can be expressed in terms of basic soil parameters including the specific gravity as shown in this equation 3. Also, the air void lines in Proctor compaction curve are calculated from specific gravity using this equation 4. If the particle density test results is smaller than 2.6, this may indicate the presence of organic matter in the soil. If it is greater than 2.8 megagram per cubic meter, this may indicate the presence of heavy minerals such as hornblende and iron oxides. This wraps up our video on the methods for determining the moisture content and particle density of soils. We hope you have gained valuable insights on the theories, procedures, and the applications of these tests. Join us in the next video as we explore another exciting topic in soil testing. Thank you for watching.